Hey everybody, good morning, good morning. Welcome to today's episode of Stocks for Breakfast. We got a lot to cover today. I'm uh, going to try some new stuff today. Uh, I just want to make sure I say hello to everybody. Milky Faye, thank you so much for joining us early again. Uh, if you could just do me a favor, confirm the audio visual is good. We'll kick it right off. I want to respect everybody's time. Uh, let me see if I can move that up just a little bit. We're going to try something new today that I haven't done before. We have some really good stuff for you. Uh, let's see, Ross Marshall, how are you today? Good morning. Thanks so much for joining us again. Uh, good morning, Shane. Welcome, welcome. Joseph, good morning. Good morning, good morning. Yeah, it's Wednesday already, right? We forget this is a, a short week already. Uh, let's see, good morning, James Daniel. How are you? How are you? Uh, let's see, John Oaks, how's it going? Like to see you in the boot camp, John. I know we got a couple of emails from you. Uh, let's see. Hey, Bob Curtis. How's it going? John A. John, thanks so much for watching and being here with us every day. Appreciate it. Uh, let's see. Hank. All right. Hank, Hank, Hank starts us off every morning with that, that big ice cold beer. <laughs> I like that. Uh, let's see. Catherine Goodson. Thank you so much for being a part of the swing trade community. Really appreciate that. Uh, let's see. Don Postma. That's a new name. How are you? Good morning. Thanks so much for joining us. Really appreciate it. Uh, by the way, if you have not done it yet, um, you can make sure that you um, schedule this every day. It's actually a big part of what we do. Uh, we're going to try something new, actually, which is kind of fun. Uh, just so you know, like my ideas <laughs> every day, the ideas are going all over the place. So we're going to we're going to try this today. Uh, we're going to we're going to work our way into uh, this. So I actually stay on track. <laughs> so we have a lot to talk about. So stick around. I'll be back in just one second. Okay, so obviously with everything that we do during the day, it is for educational purposes. Everything is up to you to make the final decision. But boy, we have a lot to discuss today. The market finally pulled back a little bit yesterday. Uh, the biggest thing that we've been looking for as active traders is that we have been waiting for some sort of profit taking where you feel comfortable buying stocks, where you don't feel like you are kind of playing musical chairs or just keeps going up and up and up. And I, I think probably the uh, biggest visualization to that is the chart of BX where it just was it kept going and going and going and going and you kind of just kept feeling like you were going to be the last person to buy and we actually had a pretty good conversation in yesterday morning's uh, game plan meeting inside the private community where Ted Santiago was long and we had some questions about profit taking strategies and whatnot and the stock actually did pull back yesterday and take him out of the trade but Ted really nice job he had a good profitable trade on that one um, hey Weldon Good morning. Happy to see you here this morning. Uh, let's see. Al Alexa or Harry Sellin. Hey, Harry, good questions last night. Uh, really good questions last night in the um, in the coaching call. And uh, Harry, I want you to keep doing that. The more tough questions you ask, the more value you're going to get out of everything that we do together. And we're actually going to give everybody a little bit of a sneak peek today into some of the stuff that happens. Um, let's see. James Daniel, uh, can we sign up for the boot camp if we've done it in the past? Absolutely. You have all that experience now. You probably get, uh, you probably kind of like move right to the front of actively participating and um, taking, probably taking advantage of more opportunity because you've kind of gone past the orientation. I'd absolutely um, take, I absolutely, James, 100%. Um, let's see. Alchemical prana body. <laughs> wow. That's a, that's a long one. Uh, thanks so much for watch, watching for almost a year. Wow. I'm very grateful. I really appreciate that. Um, let's see. Uh, my name is Bubble Gookin. All right. Thank you so much. Uh, Min, good morning. I know you had uh, contact with our team yesterday, so I hope to see you on the other side really uh, in, a, in a short order. Raphael, thank you so much for being a part of the community. I want you to know how much I appreciate that and all the help. Uh, let's see. Hey, Paul Costa. Good morning. Good morning. All right. Looking to see that as well. Uh, we have, we actually, I, ironically, um, it's really nice to see some people here that have been uh, already been a part of the boot camp. And just to let everybody know, both people that have been in the boot camp as well as new people, we have some really big upgrades coming to the boot camp. A lot of changes coming. We have a whole new, really impressive uh, new onboarding process that we have coming up soon too. So I'm really excited about that. So here's what we're going to do. I'm going to try something new. I think I have to slide a little bit this way for it to be on the screen. <laughs> but uh, I'm going to pull this up um, so that I stay on track. So this is everything that we're about to talk about today. we got a lot to cover. So 
all of these kind of things. Uh, if you have not, uh, or if you don't know about who Elizabeth Holmes is, and you haven't followed what's gone on with Theranos over the last, I think the last two or three years where it's really been a kind of a mess, actually, um, I'm just going to pull that up uh, right here. And I'm going to bring this into the screen. So Theranos and Elizabeth Holmes, uh, Theranos stands for therapy and diagnosis. And essentially what she did, I want to say she started in 2012. The trial actually starts today. You know, I'll actually punch this into the, into the chat. So if you want to read that article on the Wall Street Journal, uh, it's really a fascinating story. If you actually read it, there's been documentary after documentary on YouTube. There was one done by HBO. Just an amazing, amazingly interesting story. And essentially what they did is they said that they could take one pinprick of blood and give you every single thing that you could possibly want uh, as far as diagnosing anything from the smallest thing to the biggest thing. They created this box that was called the Edison box. It was basically the side, you know, like maybe two by two box. Uh, they raised $900 million. She was worth supposedly about $4 billion at one point, And all of it, <laughs> nothing worked. Um, she had some really high powerful people and eventually it came out. And um, this book, uh, Bad Blood uh, by John, let me see if I could pull that over a little bit. Uh, this book right here, Bad Blood by John Cariou, I believe his last name is. Uh, unbelievably fascinating book um, that just takes you through the entire story. And when you're reading it, you almost you almost won't even believe it. That's how crazy the story is uh, of how many smart people they duped. Now the trial is getting started. I actually think the trial starts today. It is just absolutely fascinating. Uh, and it's 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 a Wall Street story because she was you know she was on the cover of Fortune magazine and whatnot. There's this whole story about her talking in a different voice, her dressing like Steve Jobs. Un it's it's like a it's one of the most fascinating. I got through the book I think in one weekend. I would I, I absolutely positively would at least read what's in the book and do a little bit more research. Watch a couple of videos on YouTube. The trial starts today. Absolutely fascinating. I, that's all I got to tell you. Uh, all right, so we're going to work our way over into some uh, trading ideas today. We're actually going to hop on over. We're going to go right back into um, taking a look at the market today. Uh, we're also going to talk about something you see there about targets and stops. We're actually going to ask a couple of questions about um, how do you determine your profit targets and how do you determine your stop losses? And we're going to just going to touch on that a little bit. I also think something that's going to be fascinating is talking about something that came up on our coaching call last night where we talked about um, rebates, actually receiving payment from the ECNs to place orders. A lot of people don't even know about this. Robinhood gets a ton of press about their, their business model and payment for order flow. But I'm willing to bet that you didn't know that you can actually get paid to place your orders as well. And I'll let that sit out there for a second because you see on the on the on the side over there the uh, ECN rebates. So we're going to talk about that, and this is a fascinating part of trading, and actually something that I did quite a bit, um, probably from like 2000 to 2006, right in that area, 2000 to 2006, where we were receiving payments to place orders on ECNs in excess of 10, 20, 30. Some some traders getting fifty thousand dollars a month, getting paid. $50,000 a month to place orders. And I'll walk you through how that actually works uh, in a second. But what we're going to do is we're going we're to hop on over to uh, take a look at some charts. We're actually going to start out with win today. And we got a really good question in our community last night um, about, uh, how can I word this, about uh, how much order flow do you need to put on a trade. So we get a lot of questions about order flow and, and the quality of the idea and that kind of stuff. Win is actually a really good example because when you can clearly see the bearish order flow to the downside, breaking the uptrend, pausing for about a week, and now having a big volume breakout. But here's the thing. It's absolutely in the list today, okay? It's absolutely something that has now perked our interest. But this is something that all traders need to um, really – separate themselves from somebody who's uh, just really learning how to read charts and really getting good at setting up um, ideas, finding ideas, but then taking that the next step further. And you saw a lot of people here today talking about either being in the boot camp already and coming back for another one or asking about starting. 
These are the things that separate what we do, what makes what we do different. And I hope to, even just through these videos on YouTube, teach you these kind of things where there's a difference between I like this idea and how much you like this idea, which will translate into position sizing and initial profit targets, and then how you work that order. So we clearly have a break of the bearish order flow. We clearly have price action coinciding with higher um, volume. So you put that combination together, price action and volume. That's where you learn to read the tape in a stock. The stock paused for about a week. So you'll hear us mention quite a bit, a push and a pause and looking for another push. But it's the first day of the push on good volume. It's the first real significant push coming out of breaking that bearish order flow. You can also see that the next target would be up in that 120 two area. So once you start to put these pieces together, plus putting the pieces together to what we might call some other gaming stocks, where a DKNG, which we mentioned last week and we mentioned yesterday, Penn, we also mentioned, also right out of breakout level. So again, you start to put these pieces together. This is the first time Penn has gotten back up to this level. So above 85 is the level. So the position sizing on Penn versus a stock that's already trending in that direction, like we just showed BX, you're going to have a different initial position sizing. So again, we're going to call it posted pad moments where you're going to write this stuff down. Your initial position size needs to be determined by the quality of the order flow. So again, we're going to get into a question. I know Harry's on the call that he asked this question last night. How much order flow is the minimum order flow to determine the quality of the idea. And that really depends on whether you're a day trader or a swing trader. If you're day trading, you could look at the most recent order flow, which is just those time frames intraday, or maybe even just the last two days worth of price action. We have a lot of members of the boot camp that swing trade and day trade, so you could push yourself out a little bit. So this is the first time Penn is pushing up, good volume, but it's got to get above this level. So this would translate into a lower initial position size. CZR is another one. So again, if you're watching the um, videos every single day, which if I can just ask you for a favor, if you find these videos helpful, do me a favor, please click down and subscribe. It would mean the world to me and let me know that um, you're enjoying this content. CZR, again, a little bit better bullish push, a pause, and we broke out yesterday and looks like we're holding the bid right now with the next level at 112. So when you combine, and again, this is the stuff you want to write down, when you combine order flow with how far the stock has already gone, with whether or not the stock is at new levels, breaking out of new levels. And here's a big thing too, just as like a really quick, how many pushes and pauses have you had prior to putting on the trade? Because again, it, to keep order flow in context, order flow essentially is the smart money, the deep pockets that, it's the reason why stocks go up and down. Order flow could be buying order flow, it can be selling order flow. And if you're watching a stock, you have to think that like a large hedge fund or whoever it happens to be is buying that stock and they're pushing it around. They're buying it, they pause. They're buying it, they pause. That's what we're looking for. So if you want to think about how many shares is the appropriate risk or the appropriate initial position, look to the left and say, how many pushes and pauses have I seen? That'll tell you how much money the deep pockets have already allocated to those ideas. Now, again, that's just finding the idea. That's just position sizing, going behind the scenes and actually getting deeper into the trade management how to add to those positions, when to add to those positions, what is the right share size to add to those positions. Those are the things that are going to separate you from somebody who is just a chart reader to somebody who's a trader and completely in charge of your upside and your downside and understanding how to trade around positions. So I wanted to use these stocks that have actually been just starting a reversal because we all like to get in there with big share size. We'd all like to get in there and maximize every trade. But the truth of the matter is some trades are just starting. And some trades have a little bit more maturity to the idea. So if you could just really quickly look over to the left and say, how many pushes and pauses have I seen? That'll give you an idea of how much money the deep pockets have already committed to that idea, which should be the same for you. Because if you think about it, if we go back to win, as an example, if we're looking at win here, and this is the first push and the first pause, and we're just breaking out of that first pause, you have to be thinking to yourself, how much money was committed to that idea? And you're like, well, if the hedge funds are, again, let, let's not say um, who, let's not say, is it a hedge fund? Is it, it doesn't matter. You know, William O'Neill talks about institutional ownership uh, and that's awesome, right? That's a part of the cancelling system when he buys stocks. What we're talking about here is we're not trying to figure out who. We're just trying to spot the fact that it's happening and then we're making decisions off of that. So if you could imagine, 
And again, not even imagine, this is the first push and a pause. So if somebody is reversing this bearish order flow, if this selling pressure is starting to work its way out of win right now, it's the first push and the pause. So if that's the first sign that the bearish order flow is breaking and the first push and the first pause, doesn't that mean this is the first the first time that the smart money is getting in there and starting to build their position? So think about this from a trading perspective, and this will rock your world because this is something that most traders, most people just don't think about. And if that's the first time that they're starting to reverse that bearish order flow, it's the first push and the first pause, and that's the first time they're doing it, why in the world would you go in with full share size if they're just starting to build their position? Be smart. Jesse Livermore talks about it. Every trader in history talks about it. Put your initial trade on. Richard Wyckoff, actually, even before Jesse Livermore, talks about the first piece, the first part of the trade, and then you look to add when you get feedback from the market. So keep that super simple. The, the easier you could make fast decisions, the easier you could look at a chart and say, I know exactly what I'm looking for. I have to be honest with you, the easier trading is going to be. Now, I didn't say it's going to be easy to make money. You still need to get experience. And I'm actually going to bring up something in a second to show you from one of the members of our, um, of our community. So that's the first part about order flow. We're going to head back over to my new fancy, my new fancy thing. So that was the win breakout and putting that in context. Now we're actually going to take a look at a different stock, uh, AMC. This is obviously one that's been uh, in the news for quite a bit. And you can see AMC now with a simple setup. But again, we have a bearish order flow into the first sign of a push and a pause, a push. And now we keep banging, 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 banging. And this is known as an ascending wedge. So this ascending wedge is basically getting to the point where they hit it, hit it, hit it, hit it. But it hasn't broken above there yet. So we have basically a $48 breakout with $60 is the last place that sellers came in and did something significant, which, by the way, we get question after question after question about um, support and resistance. And how do I how do I identify support or resistance? And, and again, another we'll, call, we'll keep calling these posted pad moments. Support or resistance does not have to be challenging. And I want to show you something here as well on this chart. That's something that we do that's a unique all you need to do is where did buyers or sellers do something significant? That's it. Stop making it more complicated than that. Matter of fact, make it easier. <laughs> Look to the left and say, where did something significant happen? And then if you want to level up and make a deeper distinction, where did something happen significant that included volume? Now, here's something that is advanced. This is something that's different that I do. And I want to make it clear. This is, this is the reason... Um, this is the reason that good traders become better traders because you start to pay attention. So if you put everything that we talked about today, order flow, price action, volume, making decisions, profit targets, risk, all that kind of stuff, right? Our job, you want to be lazy? No. Our job is to say, what is the real price that matters? So if we get back into support and resistance, lazy chart readers, I'm going to come up. I'm going to show you this again. I'm actually going to take this off the screen. We're going to go back over here. And we're going to look at this here, okay? Most technical analysis books will tell you, okay, look at the last high and look at the last high, and that's the, that's the resistance level. No, that's garbage. That is 100% absolute garbage, okay? What we are looking for is we are looking for a spot to make a decision. We are looking for a spot where, where sellers came in and reversed it. Buyers came in and did something significant. We're looking for the real price that matters. And if you look at this and we go back over to AMC, $60. Okay, I didn't get that exact, but $60. Got above 60 and got pushed back. Tried to get above 60 twice, got pushed back. Got above 60 a couple of times and got pushed back. Pushed back, pushed back. $60 here is the real resistance. Not this boring ass technical analysis that you read from a book from 100 years ago. What if only 100 shares traded all the way up there at 72 and change? Think about how different this is where you're looking at price and you're digging deeper into your, what is the real price that buyers had a hard time with? What is the real price that sellers couldn't continue to push it down at? So if we're looking actually, we take a look at Tilray right now and shift on over. 
Tilray's having a really hard time at the 1250 level. So it pushes down, buyers come back in. Is, it, is this a buying opportunity yet? No, not at all. But you can see, got down to that level, got down to that level. That's the level now we need to pay attention to. So when you're looking at setting up trades, like the ascending wedge that we just looked at in AMC, it's got to get above that 48. It's got to get above that 48 with volume close above that level. And 60 is the actual target that we'd be looking for. Okay, I want to move along because we're kind of we're kind of running out of time here. Uh, so moving on over, I just want to take a quick survey and maybe we'll make this into a different, um, I, want to, I want to turn this into a little bit of a interaction right now. How do you determine your stop losses? Is it, and I'm just going to use three different ones. And if everybody could just type in there, I want to use this as a survey for future training. Do you determine your stop losses based on a technical pattern? Do you determine it based on a percentage? Again, talk a little bit like William O'Neill, they use 8%. So a technical pattern, a technical price, a percentage, or do you use average true range, which is what the stock normally does? So Helena in our community last night in our private coaching call fired up a really big conversation about targets and stop losses. So there's, there's a bunch of different ways to do it, but those are the three primary ones. Type into the chat now, let me know. So um, Tony uses, let's see, Jason, yesterday's low, uh, min ATR, uh, Richard Camacho, technical pattern, uh, uh, Dean, Dean Racine, oh, that's a cool name, uh, percentage, Pam Hicks, average true range, Catherine, based on risk, average true range, and below a range, okay? Um, let's see, Gonkakaya, a percentage, James Daniel, a percentage. Okay, awesome. So what we want to translate that into is we want to translate, once you know your percentage, then how do you set your, your targets on the upside? So if you use technical patterns, how do you determine right now where you plan on exiting the trade? At least what is the minimum risk that you need to take to justify that trade? What is the minimum target that you have to set? So if you use percentage, do you use a certain percentage on the other side? So I'm just gonna give you some ideas so that we carry this conversation and actually could think a little bit. Um, if you use a percentage, how do you determine what the percentage of profit is? Do you do what most people do where you set that three to one risk reward where if you're willing to risk, let's say 4%, does that mean your initial target is 12%? If you use a technical pattern, how do you determine what the profit is on the upside? The way that we do it is we te technically, especially for swing trades, and I think most people do this, is they use yesterday's high and low as um, the, uh, the uh, entry and the stop loss. So an easier way to do that is use the distance between the high and the low from yesterday. And I'll just keep the numbers round. So let's say for argument's sake, yesterday's high is the buy spot and yesterday's low is the stop loss. And again, just above or just below, but let's say it's $2.00 and you wanna stick with that three to one. So if your risk is $2, an easy way to calculate the initial profit target would be three times the risk on that trade. So if you bought at 50 and your risk is $3, uh, $2, if your risk is $2, bought at 50 and risk is two, and you wanna get a minimum of three, that means 50 plus six would be your initial target. Now the reason I'm saying this is because most people never never really dig a little bit deeper other than the entry and the stop loss and don't really project and they don't have the, the guts, the confidence to say, that's where I'm looking to get out. When you do that, your trading takes on a whole different level because now you're actually looking at stocks and saying, what is the odds of my profit target being hit versus my stop loss? And that's really where you start to become something really special. That's when you really start to have conviction. That's where you expect every day to be in control of whether or not you make money. So I want to challenge you right now with targets and stop losses. We got a whole bunch of different answers in there right now. Hey, Trade90X is back with us today. Good morning. So look how detailed that could be. That's awesome. That is really good. Let's see, Catherine. Uh, three to one minimum means I don't have to be right 30% of the time, but almost always. I honestly, I could not have worded that better. Catherine, you, you participate in such a way that it's always educational. I want you to know how much I appreciate that, both here and, and in the swing trade community. So the point that I want to get across here today to everybody is I want to challenge you. I'm going to challenge you right now. If you know your entry, you know your stop loss and whatever you just typed in there and maybe come back tomorrow. We have tomorrow's call. Come back and just we'll have a little bit of a feedback. I'm going to challenge you to, to, to be like Jim Cramer on CNBC. I'm going to challenge you to be like, like, a, like a money manager, which you are technically. You're managing your own money right now. Start to put out profit targets. And here's the reason. 
I'm going to go back to that quote. And again, you might want to come back and watch the video, write it down, make it a posted pad moment for yourself. Is accepting this risk worth it? So in other words, if, if here's your risk and that's the three to one, you have to know how much the stock has recently gone Again, something that Helena brought up in our coaching call last night. How far does the stock normally move? These are all things that you need to consider. And here's, here's the biggest revelation that you're going to get from this, which I think is really exciting. There's going to be trades that you would have taken last week, but now that you put the pieces together, you're entering your stop loss and you're being brave enough to put out a profit target, there's going to be trades that you don't take because it's not worth the risk. You're going to be, oh my gosh, the, yeah, okay, I could risk that amount, but the stock normally moves $10 and it's already gone eight. So why in the world would I put this trade on when I'm going to be risking $3 to make two? It doesn't even make sense. So again, we talk about this all the time. You make a big list of what doesn't work. And again, that's homework that we all need to do as traders. You learn to avoid what doesn't work and then you do more of what does work. And a part of avoiding stuff and keeping that money in your pocket, which is a giant, you, want, you work hard. You want to keep that money in your wallet. You work hard to avoid the trades that don't make sense. So the question, the, the thing I want you to write down, the, and you might, again, you might have to come back and watch this, but what are the odds of my profit target being hit versus my stop loss? And is that risk worth it? I'm telling you, if you want to elevate yourself from chart reader to tape reader and trader, those are the questions you need to ask. And again, obviously, these are the kind of things that we go over every day in our community where we're talking about the trade setup, the idea, the quality of the idea, all of that kind of stuff. So very, very interesting uh, to throw that out there. And, I, and I, it's interesting looking at the questions. I really want to see you push yourself. And again, one of the biggest things that we do, I want to challenge you. I want to challenge you to be better tomorrow than you were today, which the second part of that is I want to challenge you to participate, whether it's participating here in YouTube, whether you decide to take the next step and join us in the boot camp, or after the video is over, maybe you're watching this video on replay sometime in the future, leave a comment below. The only way to expand and be better tomorrow than you are today is to ask questions. Don't wait for somebody else to ask the question that's related to your experience. Everybody on this call right now, everybody in our private community has different experience different risk tolerance, different skill level, different capital they're bringing to the market, different knowledge of what they're doing. Ask the question that will make you better tomorrow. So hopefully I'm reading the comments and, and that kind of stuff and from our private community uh, and getting to the point where I'm, I'm kind of like starting the conversation and then you can leave a comment here. You can leave a comment in the, uh, in the chat and we'll continue to go back. And if you happen to be new to our channel and especially um, if you happen to be new to me first, um, I, I just, I really want you to know how grateful I am that you're here with me because uh, I really want to help. Uh, if you could please do me a favor, click down and subscribe. Uh, that would be the first thing that I would like to ask you to do um, in exchange for this. If I'm providing value to you, um, please click down and subscribe, hit that alert. But like I said, leave comments. That's the big thing because that'll let me know that the interactions that we're having. But the biggest thing that I, I want to get across is if you're watching this right now, I want you to know I'm grateful, but I'm going to challenge you. Every single time we have these calls, every single time that um, you post a question, if you happen to be in our private community, the whole goal is to get out of your comfort zone. The whole goal, and, and, and I'm just going to say this in the most respectful way, there's a higher level for all of us. If you're watching this call right now, there's still a little bit of a conflict where you, you kind of probably know a lot of stuff, but you know that there's more inside of you. You know that there's another level that you can get to which actually brings me to something that I want to share with everybody right now. Um, this is the kind of stuff that goes on in our community. And I just, I, I want you to know how much we, we help everybody and what our community is all about. And I'd like to think that that starts from the top and filters its way down from the people that work with us all the way down to the members of our community. I want to share this. Um, you can probably snapshot this because this is a big part of what we do every day. Um, and this is this is an email. Uh, this is this is our daily email that goes out. But I wanted to just share the journey. I wanted to share what it takes to be a successful trader. What it takes to last. And and one of the things that Jerry, who is one of the most gracious people with giving his experience, um, you can see Jerry's been trading for 19 years, and he's gotten to the point now where he feels confident about his edge. But I think that the entire thing. And again, you can snapshot this if you want. This is. This is a post of stuff that happens in our community every day. It's all about helping each other. It's all about collaboration. 
But this is the secret sauce. All you really need is resilience, determination, and patience. That's real. That's what real trading's about. That's what it takes to be successful. Trading is not about show me the perfect inside five minute candlestick. It's, it's not about show me the perfect bull flag. Successful trading is about persistence. Successful trading is about what I'm asking you to do right now. Get out of your comfort zone. If you're learning stuff on these things, hit that subscribe button so you get alerts. Hit the alerts so you get you know when we're coming live again. I want you to know that if you're on this call right now, you've already shown a burning desire to be successful. It's 7.30 in the morning, 8 o'clock, and you're logging in. Why are you logging in? Because you want to be better. You want to be better tomorrow. You want something to be working for yourself. So we talked about some stuff today. We talked about profit targets and having the guts to get out there and come up with a profit target. We talked about patterns. We talked about order flow. All of this is kind of what Jerry's talking about, building that 19 years of experience, learning from everything that works, having the resilience. But I'm going to tell you right now, you stepped out of your comfort zone. You woke up. I don't know what time everybody woke, wakes up. We have some people from across the world. So they're up four o'clock in the morning, 12 hours ahead of us. If you're here right now, you have that inside of you already. All I want to do is help spark it to get to the next point. And maybe these dialogues that we have every day, if you want to be here on um, on, on YouTube with me, that's great. We'll continue to have these conversations. If you want to take the next step and and um, be a part of our boot camp like Jerry is, and Jerry, Jerry is just, our whole community is gracious. Jerry just posted that long thing to give his experience to other members of our community, and I'm hoping to pay that back right now. I get questions all the time about why am I doing this? Why do I have a coaching program? Why am I doing these videos? I'll tell you why. Trading's freaking hard. <laughs> Trading is hard. And, and, you know, there's some days where you're like, you know, you're like getting bounced back and forth. August was challenging. But sometimes you don't need a different trading answer. Sometimes you need somebody to say, just keep going. Minimize the downside and keep going. And today we talked about resilience. We talked about persistence. We talked about order flow. We talked about targets. We talked about stop losses. And we talked about participating. If you want to wake up every single day expecting to make money, you need to step out of your comfort zone, really in detail, ask yourself, what am I missing and where can I get it? And I'd like to be the place that you get that. So I actually have to hop on over into our private game plan meeting. It starts in a, in a few minutes, uh, actually in a little bit. Um, but I, first, I want you to know how grateful I am that you're here with me today. Uh, I really hope I'm inspiring you to come back here every day. And I want you to come back every day with more questions. I want you to come back with stuff that's challenging you. I don't want you to come back with, what do you think XYZ stock is doing today? Because that's the easy stuff. That's If I tell you what to do, as far as, yeah, do that, do that, do that, you're not going to be the asset. You want to be the asset. You want to be the reason you make money. I want you to come back with questions that are roadblocks for you. I want you to come back with questions that's going to bring you to be better tomorrow than you were today. And that starts first with hitting that uh, subscribe button, smashing the like button if we're providing value, and then coming back the next time we have a call. And if you really want to take it to the next level, the next step, you can join Jerry and the other people that we have in our community. As soon as this video is over, I'll post the link below if I haven't done it already. Um, but I just want you to know how much I appreciate it. And I hope that I'm inspiring you to know that there's something deeper inside of you, something that's more that you probably, you know it's in there. It's like this quiet voice that keeps telling you that you could do more. That's why I'm doing these videos every day to make that voice louder for you. And then hopefully we keep building this bond where we trust each other more and we keep getting involved more. So have an awesome, awesome day, everybody. Watch this video again, go over the profit target stuff. So you start personally setting profit targets based on your risk. And then ask that final question based on order flow. What are the odds of my profit target being hit? So do me a favor, hit that subscribe button if this was good for you today. Uh, I hope it was. You might have to watch this a couple of times to get back in there and really systematize everything we talked about. I'm going to call it a meeting. We have to head on over into our other call. Um, if you want to learn more about the other call, I'll post the, the link below the video. Uh, have an awesome, awesome, profitable day, and I will speak to you soon. Thank you so much for joining me today.